All right, let's talk about graphs of the cotangent where we modify the cotangent in some way. I'm not going to dwell on this because it's hopefully pretty familiar by now. Give me a second to get rid of all of that. You know, we've seen if we have a cosine, we've seen what happens if we put an A up there. The A stretches the graph or it presses the graph down. And that's exactly what happens to the sign as well. A stretches it or smooshes it down. And it's exactly what happens to the tangent. It stretches it up or smooshes it down. So there is no reward for guessing what A will do to the cotangent. As A goes up, this thing gets pulled upwards. As A gets close to zero, this thing gets smushed down towards the x-axis. Similarly, um, If we have the sine or the cosine, let's say, we've seen what happens if we have a B there, that B controls the period, which speaking graphically, either smushes the graph horizontally, like an accordion, or stretches it horizontally, like a spring. And that's what B does to the cosine, and it's what B does to the sine, and we've seen now that it's what B does to the tangent. So again, we can probably imagine what it will do to the cotangent. Exactly the same thing. Increasing A, increasing B, I mean, will smush this graph horizontally. Decreasing B towards zero will have the opposite effect. It will pull this graph apart horizontally. Let's see. With the sine, the cosine, and the tangent, we've seen what happens if we put a C here. It moves the graph horizontally. It does that for the sine. It does that for the cosine. It does that for the tangent, we can only speculate what it will do for the cotangent. Oh no, it does exactly what we'd expect. The exact same thing that it did with all of the other trig functions. Finally, if we have, let me change this to a cosine. If we have a D up here, what's it do to the cosine? Well, it moves it up and down vertically. What's it do to the sine? Well, it moves it up and down vertically. What's it do to the tangent? Well, it moves it up and down vertically. It 
exactly what we would probably have expected. It moves the cotangent up and down vertically. So just as with the tangent, these parameters don't have names when we're giving the cotangent. Like if we put a five in front of that cotangent, this five is not called the amplitude as it was with the sine and the cosine. But this all works the way we've seen it work three times already. Vertical stretching, horizontal stretching, horizontal movement, vertical movement. And that's as much time as we are going to spend on the cotangent, or at least on the graphs of the cotangent.